Who didn't even shut the barn door all the way? Get out of here. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, Lord. Well, what's up, guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, it's kind of chilly this morning. It's kind of chilly in Oklahoma. It, don't, don't get me wrong. I think the high today is like 65 to 70 degrees. It's going to warm up nice. It's ah, mm, I love this weather. But I'm going to try to get out here, get a couple things done early this morning. And I say early. I didn't get out here near as early as I planned because I've been uh, taking care of other business things. Oh, someone asked, hey, did you get a new boat? No. <laughs> I bought a boat last fall and we're just trying to get everything rigged up, geared up, and ready to go. Someone asked if all the lights on it were like for an alien space attack or to keep zombies away on the lake or... No, those are for bow fishing. I'm gonna do some bow fishing real soon. Um, I hadn't said anything in a while, but guys, remember our meetup, our meet and greet that we're gonna be at with Keeping It Dutch and um, Hidden Heights Farm and the Crockers and everybody, tons of other channels probably be there. Um, is coming up March 28th in Pryor, Oklahoma. Um, keeping it Dutch, a good buddy of mine, Dutch, has a Facebook page event made for that. I'll link, link it in the description box down below. Um, sneaking up on us quickly. So it's going to be a huge crowd. Dutch talked to me uh, last night and he said he's got commitments from Premier One. Uh, Joe from Premier One is going to be there and the lighting's terrible. How about that? Let's get away from the sun. There we go. So Joe from Premier One is going to come down. He's going to do some demonstrations with all the Premier One electric uh, net fence products. The company that sent us the electric bikes, they're called electric bikes. Um, they're going to be there and they're giving away two electric bicycles at the meetup. Those things are, they're so cool. They're about, I want to say they're about $800 a piece. So if you're interested in winning a electric bike, come check it out. We're gonna have vendors, we're gonna have booths. I think Dutch is gonna have some food trucks. It's gonna be a cool deal. He's got a contract with a, uh, a hotel in Pryor, Oklahoma for group rates on hotel rooms if you need somewhere to stay. Anyways, we look forward to seeing everybody there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, mark that down on your calendar, March 28th. So there's one honeydew knocked off the list for today. So obviously this is our driveway. This is where the road goes down to the creek. So a lot of you are probably wondering, why in the world are you spreading gravel way over there? Well, because that's that was my honeydew chore for the day. My wife does not enjoy having to park her vehicle over here in the mud when it rains. So if you're not familiar with our situation with the creek, I'll go show you that in a minute and what we have to do when it floods, because we do have a creek that runs across our driveway. We have to plan ahead, park vehicles on this side of the creek, and this little area over here was always just dirt, so when it rained, we'd have a couple inches of water standing there. Wife didn't like having to get out of the car in the water, so I had a 
load of crushed stone hauled in. It's not perfect. I need to do a little bit more work, but we'll let it settle for now and then smooth it out later. So we park over there and then we have a trail that leads to the bridge. Now I didn't have enough rock to completely rock the trail, but we are sitting on a rock hill and very little grass grows right here. So that's not a problem. But when it floods, the creek gets there, we get, um, usually if it take, it's I'd say two to three inches of rain typically, the creek will get up and we won't be able to drive across. So we have a walk bridge and it's just wide enough to get my side by side across, but typically we just walk across it. And a lot of people when we built this said, why didn't you build something big enough to drive a car across? Well, I don't know if you guys have priced what it costs to build a bridge 110 feet long that is capable of carrying the weight of a car. That's extremely expensive. But the next thing is, is whoa, if you build it big enough for a car to cross, even though this is on private property, it's not a public roadway, you have to worry about people crossing it and tearing it up. So you have to hire people to design it for you, to engineer it, to build it to spec, make sure the weight rating's right, and then you gotta pay insurance because if someone drives something too big across it and they crash and kill themselves, then their family's gonna sue you. Even though you can put no trespassing posted signs up. Long story short, I didn't have the money to build something I could drive a car across and we don't need to drive a car across every day. We have this. We only use it on occasion when it rains, but it's stinking cool. I love it. I mean, who else do you know that has a creek like that across their driveway? And it is so pretty this time of year. Now, if you weren't a follower of our channel when we built this bridge, I have an entire playlist of videos on YouTube. You can go look it up and find it. If I remember, I'll drop a link to that playlist in the description box down below. I know a lot of you have been around since then, but hard to believe it. But that bridge, I think it's like two years old already. It's crazy. We've come a long ways. Morning, goaties. I locked up the alpacas and fed them last night before dark. Uh-oh. Ducks, we can't be doing that. This is a family channel. Family channel, ducks. Anyways, locked up the alpacas last night because I have to feed them separately from these yahoos. Uh -uh. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up! Back up! Jeez! Dang, girls! But, what I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted is all the little baby goats can get in here and they eat the grain with the alpacas. They all look like little inmates. You're stuck behind the fence. You'll need to get out of there. What are you girls doing? Y'all want to go out and graze this morning? Hey, everyone's been asking if we uh, have taken these girls to the vet to see if we've verified they're pregnant yet or not. And we have not. Um, I'm working on buying a stock trailer. I'm going to split it with a good friend of mine. So we don't have a stock trailer to haul them in. I don't want to borrow a trailer. So I'm fixing to buy a stock trailer and then we can get these girls to the vet and have them preg checked and do a little health check on them. Oh my gosh. Get out of there. I didn't get the barn door shut all the way. Turn my back for two seconds. Get out of here, goats. Come on now. They just destroy everything. Let's get a little feed. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. Hey, goats. Oh, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. God! Who didn't shut the barn door all the way? Get out of here. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh Lord.
Get out of here. ask why I have this latch on my barn door and it's because sometimes when you shut this door it doesn't catch and the goats will go boom and flood the barn <sighs> got all the ones in the barn caught Bear, is this, is this your fault? Can I, can I blame you, Bear? Huh? Or do I have to blame myself? So, I guess I'll get a bucket of feed. See if I can get the rest of them to come in. Come on, girls. Just too many good delicacies out here for y'all to eat. I don't have time. I got places to be. Or I just let y'all out in grace. Hey, come on. Come on. I know you'll come eat out of the bucket. Come on. Hey, you're the biggest pain around here, you know that? I don't know if you guys can see this. She has got a gash on her forehead. Probably from headbutting another goat. It's hard to see through the hair. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, girls. And boys, come on. Woo, come on, goats. We got one more. One more holdout. Come on in. Good girl. All right, you pains. I gotta go feed the cow. Yeah, goats are fun. They're no problem at all. No, no, no problems with goats. No. It's just all rainbows and butterflies. Till one of them knocks in the barn door and destroys everything in the barn in about 3.5 seconds. Go, fellas. You gonna get up meat, Big Mac, or you just gonna sit there? You just lay there. That's all right, buddy. Come eat when you're ready. Hey, don't forget to shut the barn door. Gosh. So, I'm trying to get all of my chores done as quickly and as early as possible today. Got a little honeydew chore knocked off. Uh, we've got to leave in about 30 minutes because, <laughs> well, just busyness. So my, wife's, uh, my wife has a sister who's a senior in high school. You guys have seen her several times. Her name's Katie. She, <sighs> And the girls basketball high school, or the girls high school basketball team are still in the basketball season. They made it through districts, regionals, and are playing in the area tournament today. And that starts at 11:30, I believe. And then Weston has a ball game this evening. He's their basketball season's already ended. He did exceptionally well. Finished the season, I think, with like 350 points. Crazy. He's ex 
he's a good athlete. But now <laughs> basketball season ended and the next day baseball season started. So we got to go to Katie's basketball game and then we've got to drive about two hours back south to where Weston's playing baseball today. So I may bring you guys along, show you a little bit. Everyone's always asking why they don't see Weston on the channel. Well, first off, it's because he's 17. And uh, I know when I was 17, everything my dad did was not cool enough for me. I didn't, I didn't wanna do that stuff. And uh, I think he's kind of the same way. So we may go cram a camera in his face while he plays baseball, or at least from across the field. But he's just not that interested in being on the channel. He is around, but he's a teenager, they're elusive. They always have bigger and better plans than what we have going on here, which is fine. I get it. I've been a teenager. He's 17. He's a junior in high school. Just tra transitioning into becoming his own adult eventually. Oh, dear. But not this one. This one's not ever growing up. She says she's not going to be a teenager. She's not going through puberty. Not doing all those things. She's just going to be my little girl forever. Yeah. Look, I got new shoes. Oh, got new kicks? Yep. All right, well, I got to go in and get ready so we can go to ball games.